game. We ended up getting more image in on Trey. Um, he ended up having a small um, chip on his finger, so he's going to be out about seven days. Then from the game, that was it. Tyler's at his thumb. Now I'm not going to get into which finger it is. Okay. One of his five. Kyle, on Trey, the, uh, can you explain what a chip finger is or what your understanding of it is at least? Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't bothering him much because you just thought it was jammed on that helmet. And then when you get all the images on it, there's, you, when they showed it to me, it's microchip of a bone that's off. He chipped it, which is a small chip fracture, um, which is worse than a jam. Uh, that's why it's not going to just heal on its own without um, taking them. I mean, you can't take snaps and do all that stuff right now. So we just got arrested for seven days, they say, and that should be a, make it heal. And hopefully he'll be good next Monday when we get into practice. Kyle, from what you've seen now through three games with Trey Lance, how has he progressed in his going through his progressions, his reads, his fundamentals, all of that, all of those things you look for? Uh, I, th I think he's gotten better with each game. Um, he's gotten better throughout the whole process. Something he'll keep having to work on, though, and every single week, every single day, and throughout his entire career also. Is it kind of what you would expect from a rookie quarterback? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's really exactly what you expect. What kind of Lions preparation um, are you planning this week? And um, would Trey not being able to take part in practice affect his availability if he is able to you know, start practicing the Monday before the game? Yeah, we won't do any this week. It's, um, you know, we'll have a practice Wednesday and Thursday, and then the whole league has those next three days off. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest overrated things um, right now is this whole extra bye week that everyone is acting like we have. I don't see it much difference than how it is every single year. Normally on this day, I'm doing the exact same thing. Um, we're resting our players because you just play the game on usually Saturday or Sunday. Travel back a lot, and day we grade it all. Usually give guys, usually do a light walkthrough on Tuesday. Usually have a practice on Wednesday. Then you play about half of your guys in that Thursday game a lot who are making your team, the guys who aren't playing, you have a little conditioning thing. So basically, in a normal week, when you have a week four or a fourth preseason game, you're only doing stuff on Wednesday and Thursday. And then you take Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off, and you start up Monday, which is exactly what me, everyone in the league is doing this week, except we don't have to get through that game on Thursday and play some guys and risk getting guys injured, which is awesome. Um, but as far as this whole extra time and stuff, I me, it feels the exact same as always, but it's nice to not have to go through that process of that fourth game. When it comes to Detroit and everything, we're just going to get two good practices in. Um, we'll work throughout the week, so when they come in on Monday, that's probably when we'll start giving them some of the game plan. I have one quarterback question. Oh, I got plenty of time for that. Um, then go ahead. <laughs> um, just, just broadly, uh, what's What's the biggest challenge you face in terms of the, approaching the season and knowing that you have a guy that you're developing for the long term while also understanding you have a team that's that's ready co to contend right now? Um, yeah, you know, if I take in a, you know, there's a, there's a couple things to it, but if, you know, I sit in, that's why I try to make it start with what gives you the best chance to win. And that's kind of what you owe to an organization. That's, that's what you owe to your building. That's what you owe to all the, the players and coaches on the team who are, grinding every single week and you know whether it's players whether it's coaches whether it's personnel people I mean you do what you can to win and if you're not I don't feel like you're being fair to people I mean I always try to look at everything as wins and losses depend on where, where you're telling your kids they're going to school at the end of the year and that, that's a big deal to a lot of people to everybody to families and to the individual and so you always try to think of when it's your decision hey what helps us win and keep it there. At the same time, I get um, spinning the draft picks to get a young quarterback, and you got to do what's right for that guy too. And what has, I think, been tough on Trey is you know, he didn't get to play football all last year. All right, so regardless of what happens, I'm always trying to make sure that Trey doesn't go a whole nother year without playing football. We're going to make sure that we do what's best for him 
getting him reps on the on the practice field, hopefully in games too, and we'll see how this all pans out. But my order of thinking always starts with what's best for this organization, what gives the organization the best chance to win, and then after that, I'm I'm always thinking of the individual. All right, Thank thanks, you. Chris. Thanks, everybody. All right, guys. Thanks. See you.